why don't our beginning violin and viola players like to use their fourth fingers? Where cellos and basses don't seem to care if they use fourth fingers. You know, and your cellos and basses aren't gonna be like, fourth finger, yeah, I don't wanna do that. Well, maybe it's because violinists and violists don't always have to use their fourth fingers. And maybe it's because a lot of our method books leave out the fourth finger until much later in the book. To beginners, using the fourth finger doesn't feel good. It also doesn't sound good and it's out of tune, but they don't care so much about that. They care that it doesn't feel good. Why? Well, it's uncomfortable. So if you ask your students, well, can you describe the discomfort? Like what, what's uncomfortable about it? Oh, well it, well, it hurts. Okay, well, what, what hurts? Let's dig a little deeper. What, what hurts? Well, my, my pinky hurts. Okay, specifically, like where does it hurt? And, and you, know, you, you dig at this and, and what they're actually trying to tell you is that there's tension built up everywhere and they're uncomfortable because of all of the tension. So if you can release that tension in the left hand, it won't hurt so much to play the, the fourth finger. You know, maybe the tip of the finger hurts a little bit, but only for like a couple of weeks and that goes away. But what they're actually describing is tension in the hand. There's two ways that we can alleviate the discomfort. The first way is to fix our technique. And the second way is just to play open strings instead of fourth finger. Now, which one do you think students are gonna prefer to use? Of course, they're gonna wanna take the path of least resistance. It's perfectly natural to do that. Why would you put yourself through discomfort when you can just play the open string? I get it, but it's good to alleviate the tension too. That way, once that becomes comfortable, they won't have to avoid the discomfort anymore and they can use their fourth fingers naturally. Wouldn't it be cool to use that path of least resistance effect to our advantage? So what can we do to make playing open strings less comfortable or playing with tension in the hand less comfortable than doing it correctly? Well, if they have to choose between being able to do a comfortable fourth finger and an uncomfortable fourth finger, well, that one's gonna be an obvious choice, but the open string thing might be a little different. So what we wanna do is create accountability. So we have to have them do things or play exercises that require fourth finger, like tetrachordal finger patterns. And in the teaching companion, available at teachingorchestra.com, I start every single teaching companion with finger patterns and the violins and violas have to be able to use fourth finger to make this work. And in the A string, again, fourth finger instead of the open strings. The other way to provide accountability is you, you can have your students play like here from 21 to 23 and you can just have them have the inside players play and the outside players watch, and you can watch to make sure that they're using their fourth fingers here in the first violin section. In the second violins at 39, this might be a better spot for it because they have G, A, G. So the rule I give my students is that you cannot cross strings just to play on an open string, so you must use your fourth finger and stay on the D string. Partner up your students and have the outside players watch as the inside players play and they can provide some accountability. They can also look for some tension in the hand. Hey, are they squeezing? Are, is, are their thumbs turning white? Are the insides of their index fingers turning white? Is, is there enough space in between this the left part of their hand and the neck of the violin and viola? You can have them look at all that stuff because you got a lot of students in your class and it's hard for you to give them all one-on-one -on -one attention, but they can give each other that one-on-one -on -one attention immediately. And sometimes you learn better from watching other people and you see how they fix their mistakes and then you in turn can fix your mistakes. Or if you can figure out how to get somebody else to fix their mistakes, maybe you can figure out how to get yourself to fix those mistakes. Peer-to-peer -peer coaching is my secret weapon and my other secret weapon are pull-ups. And what I'll have my students do is I will have them pull up on the neck like this and this creates a lot of flexibility with the fingers. I do this as a part of my vibrato series because to play with vibrato, you also need to alleviate tension in the hand, but it also helps to open up the hand. And if your hand's opened enough, then you can have your weight transfer to the fourth finger, which makes it easier to play, and you get better tone because you can push hard enough with your fourth finger. You can use them as a part of your warm-up exercises, but also you can use them in the middle of class. You know, they're playing along, and suddenly you feel like they're starting to get tense, you're starting to see some white thumbs, you can just stop them right where they are. Okay, let's do some pull-ups, ready? And up, down, up, down, up, down. All right, let's get back to measure 39. I like to teach vibrato to my beginning string players because 
they have to relax to be able to play with vibrato. They can't have tension in the hand and play with good vibrato. And so I teach that to my beginners because it, it gives them some accountability to the left hand and the left hand shape. The longer you wait to teach your students vibrato, the more tension can build up and the harder it's gonna be for your students to let go of that tension. So if you need help and you need some tips to teach your students vibrato early on, check out season one, episode four. I have a whole episode on vibrato and I have the way I teach vibrato in the classroom and it's all about loosening up the hand and being able to have good left hand shape and all of my exercises are designed to have accountability. If you don't like that, there's the shaker egg method and there's all this other kind of stuff and that's fine. I just like to have accountability in my teaching. In the next video, I'm gonna talk about common problems and a lot of middle school non-varsity orchestras play sailor song at competitions and I think it's a very good choice. I think it's a very smart thing to program because it's accessible and they can sound really good on it even if they don't have the best technique. However, there are some still some spots where they can get tripped up. So I'm gonna go over those in the next video so that if you take this piece to contest, you don't fall in those traps. See you in the next one. <laughs>